on this adventure, my friend Joe and I are traveling to South America to explore Ecuador. Starting in the Galapagos, we'll be on a six-day yacht cruise taking us through the Central Islands. Wow! Pirates and whalers were collecting hundreds of them. Galapagos! Then, we're on to the mainland, visiting the capital of Quito. I say it's worth the wait. Yeah. Traveling south, we spend a few days in the mountainous region of Cotopaxi National Park. Fuck yeah, that was hard. This is one of the activities I've been looking forward to most. All right, we're galloping. <laughs> From Cotopaxi, we head down for outdoor adventures in the province of Baños. Oh my God. I then conclude my trip in the Amazon city of Tena. These people are Kichwa. Have a look at that. It'll be a new destination and new adventure, spending three weeks in Ecuador. Can't get any better than this. Ecuador. This is a place I've been wanting to visit for many years now, and now I finally get to go and experience this adventure with my best friend Joe. And if you watch any of my videos from the past, you know that we've been doing this once or twice a year for many years. So here's to 11 years of travel together. We're gonna to start in the Galapagos and we found that the best way to explore these islands was booking it through a cruise package, which is not cheap, but because it's protected lands, even though we're gonna be with a big group, it's still gonna feel pretty remote. Probably no internet and definitely no drones out there. This is a place that Charles Darwin made famous for his theory of evolution years after first visiting the Galapagos and studying animals back in 1835. When we're there, we'll get to see lots of species native to the Galapagos, such as sea lions, turtles, penguins, iguanas, boobies, not those kind of boobies, birds. <laughs> from the Galapagos, we'll be solo traveling on the mainland from Quito all the way to the Amazon of Tena, basically experiencing three different climates, from the warm tropical climate of the islands to the cold of the mountains, to the cloudy rainforest of the Amazon. And I'm excited, so what are we waiting for? Let's get to Ecuador. That rhymed. <laughs> it's a direct six hour flight from New York City to Quito, the capital of Ecuador. Grabbing a taxi to our hotel, we checked in, had breakfast, then headed back out to see the middle of the world. I have heard that the real equator line is not exactly here. That's what she said. It's about a couple of miles away. She said that's exactly what she said. Yo transporte. Mital del Mundo, or middle of the world, is in the province of Pinchincha, Ecuador. Quito is the closest city on the planet to the equator line. Its monument, 16 miles north of the center, divides the two hemispheres by a yellow line, highlighting the exact location of the equator from which the country takes its name making this Ecuador's most popular and unmissable tourist attractions. And now it's hot again. <laughs> to get here was about a 40 minute taxi ride, which was nice because we got to see a little bit of Quito because we will come back to Quito after the Galapagos to spend a couple of days here. But it was good to see a little bit of it for the first day. So this is all we have planned for today. Good start for the first day of Quito. <laughs> we spent the rest of the evening taking it easy at the hotel. Oh, and he scratches. The next morning would be spent visiting Quito's southern end. Beautiful. So welcome to El Guanacillo. This is a different village or town. It is known for having the statue of Virgin Mary at the top of the town where you can overlook Quito. And that's where we're going to be heading to. See, this is what I wanted. Action, liveliness. Independence Square is the central public square of Quito with its monument remembering heroes of 1809 during the Spanish monarchy. Built in 1535, the Cathedral Metropolitana is the senior most Catholic church in the country, with its tunnels leading to a rooftop view of Panacillo. Wow. Watch your step. Oh, they were not joking when they said, watch your head. <laughs> 
You're gonna have to put the camera down for this. Yeah? Yeah, there's bars. Oh boy. There's bars. You got a duck on there? You might have to grab my bag. Batman over here. <laughs> Banesio, meaning loaf of bread for its shape, is a 200 meter hill in the center of Quito, elevating 3,000 meters above sea level. I say it's worth the wait though. Yeah. Come back down. That's gonna be the hard part. <laughs> That was very tight. Los patitos del Cristo le vengo a dólar. El patito del Cristo un dólar. Wow, this place is busy. I love it. It's so vibrant. I've been saying it wrong all day. It's not the statue of Virgin Mary, it's the Virgin of Quito. Ah, el Virgen de Quito. Ah, gracias. Which we learned from the taxi driver. The Virgin of Quito is the highest statue in Ecuador at 41 meters, a replica of a 17th century wooden sculpture of Mary. Built from 7,400 pieces of aluminum, completed in 1975, it sits atop central Quito, visible throughout the city. Looks like we got some locals flying kites over here. We'll go check that out. I think that's it for today. This was a great day out. Didn't do much. Checking out the town of Pancerio. It was really nice. The Virgin de Quito was beautiful. Now we're gonna head back to the hotel because we're gonna have our meeting because starting tomorrow begins our six-day Galapagos cruise trip. Can't wait. He doesn't know how to say the name of the statue. Say it. What's the name? Virgin de Quito. <laughs> I got it right. Virgin de Quito. Not quite. That evening, we met our Galapagos group for dinner to get acquainted. We had an early morning start as the tour company arranged the shuttle to take us to the airport. 5.30 in the morning and it's cold, but we are off to the Galapagos where in a few more hours, that'll all change. We got butterflies because now I feel like the adventure is about to begin. Galapagos, baby! <laughs> 500 miles off the coast of Ecuador, it's a three-hour flight to the island of San Cristobal. 10 minutes past 11 in the morning, temperature up on arrival, 27 degrees Celsius. Now, it is hot again. <laughs> Already our first iguana, chilling at the airport. <laughs> it was a short bus ride to the port where we'll catch a dinghy escorting us to our yacht on the Grand Queen Beatrice. Are you kidding me? <sighs> what? <laughs> Yeah, this will do. This place is amazing. We got an upstairs lounge area with a big flat screen TV, coffee machine. <laughs> we have a couple of balconies and upstairs we have a hot tub. This place is top notch. This is gonna be a great six days. Just then, our guide Roberto was arriving, who we'll soon get to meet after setting sail, settling in, and enjoying a delicious lunch. What's your name? Jamie. Jamie. Tony, nice to meet you. Tony and Joe. Tony and Joe. Very nice to meet you. While on the upper deck, hovering above us, was the magnificent frigate birds, thought to be an endemic subspecies of the islands. Can you see that? There's like three of them floating right above our heads. Like, really close. When I first said you're not riding sky, Roberto is talking. After our briefing, we began with our first activity. And when you are using the, the snorkel, breathe slow. But slow. No, not, not like that. So who wants the wetsuit? Here we go. 
Listo, listo. Ok, you can turn around and turn around like a sea lion. 3, 2, 1. It came out of nowhere. He swam right past my face. It was just like. <laughs> <laughs> After watching a beautiful sunset from the ship, we formally got to meet the rest of the crew before dinner. Okay, my friends, so for you and Allah. Yes, yes. Oh, is this for me? We're just slumming it here. I don't know. It's terrible. It's terrible. Day number one sleeping on the ship was very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> we sailed seven hours while we slept. It was a lot of choppiness in the waters. Once we got rocked to sleep, at least I slept pretty good until about three o'clock in the morning when we just heard the sounds of things crashing onto the ground from the desk. <laughs> a lot of rocking going on, so I guess that's something we're gonna have to get used to. Okay, cheek to cheek. <laughs> <laughs> Our entire Ecuador trip was centered around the Galapagos, so it's pretty exciting to explore our first island of the most well-preserved ecosystem and largest marine sanctuary on the planet. Penguin, penguin, penguin. Sea lion coming. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, this is considered one of the smallest penguins in the world, but this is the only one living in the, in the Equator line, crossing the Equator here in Isabela, breeding in... Uh, the north coast of Isabella Island, North Hemisphere. You know, penguins are typical birds of the south. Four species on one picture. That is great. <laughs> ah, yes, the lobo. It is coming for pictures. Okay, my friends. It's a good poser. He disturbed mom sleeping. So now, please uh, follow me. They are young uh, sharks, sharks and turtles together. Endemic to Galapagos. The oh, one oh. is no, they have a shorter <laughs> nose. They are beautiful. Look at even they have a very sexy smile. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny because the Latin name of the marine iguana in San Cristobal is Amblirinchus Cristatus Godzilla. Yeah. It is real. Are you okay? How was the night? You came over. Yeah. <laughs> sea lions for many years were considered as subspecies of Californian sea lions. In fact, the name was Salopus Wolebaki, endemic to this island, a cousin of the Californian. That is also why you can see many of them with tags, because we are studying the differences between these guys and those from California. <laughs> like a snoring. Yes. Is he snoring? Yeah. I know, too bad you can't pet him. I know, I know, I just want to know his face. are cannibals. Oh boy. Hello. Look at how he's chasing the other one, but the other thinks, no way, not today. Night. Walk around this oh, way. The very little way, I think they are from this year. This morning was incredible. Tons of wildlife. First time seeing sea lions in person. Just chilling in this natural habitat. And there's something very peaceful about it, which is why I don't go to zoos anymore. And Roberto, not only is he super knowledgeable, but the guy is really entertaining. Some of them are moving slowly. Others move very fast. You know, I could listen to him all day, but then this video would be about three hours long just from this morning. But it's great having him with us because we get to learn while we're also having a good time. Life long and prosper. 
Yeah, they don't remember the Star Trek. So the Galapagos is turning out to be magnificent. We're now going to be exploring Isabella Island, the largest of the 13 major Galapagos Islands. The sea lions are all over the place. We then visited the national park that's established a breeding program and sanctuary for endangered tortoises. Hi friends. Wow. So have, uh, oh my god. This place was established in 1992. This is named after Tupisa. He was one of the first national park rangers working and helping in the recovering of this uh, species. Main objective was to recover populations of two species. Pirates and whalers were collecting hundreds of them, bones, meat, hats especially, shells, everything was used from these uh, animals. And the population was Wow, anyone who's watched my channel long enough knows that. I like turtles! Note the characteristic of these torches, the shells. Mm -hmm. It is flat, it's like a table. This is the population of Cinco Cerros, a group of species from Sierra Negra next to Cerro Azul. So in 1997, there was an important eruption of Cerro Azul. So it was necessary to receive the assistance of many people, militaries with helicopters, and recover this group of torches that were very close to disappear thanks to the volcanic activity. We were now making our way to the beach, if we could get past the bridge of iguanas. Sorry, buddy. I'll move. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Oh, I can't. I can't. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. No, 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 don't worry. Give me your hand. Okay. Very good. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You did it very well. All right, sorry, fellas. I'm going to go over. Walking over there, you will find the path to go to the beach. Look at this beautiful sand. Let's check the temperature of the water. The temperature is actually nice. It's cooling as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Big one. Great day at the beach. We have a good group of people. Everyone's getting along. Isabella had a cool vibe. And now, ending the day with another sunset view. Day number three, new day, new island. It's about 6.15 in the morning. The sun is just starting to come out. We have a full day of activities ahead of us today, starting with visiting the oldest post office in South America, and then we have two snorkeling spots. We will be visiting the island of Floriano, also known as Post Office Bay, for its historical tale. The first man living in Galapagos since 1807 to 1809. His name was Patrick Watkins, originally from Ireland. In fact, he was abandoned on this oh, place. No. So from here, he walked for about one day to the highlands where we have a spring and water and established a, a little farm. So he was coming all the time when he could see a ship arriving to the post office and exchange his products until 1809 when the story said that here in post office there was a note. In that note, uh, walking the road that he was tired of life, and he donate all his production. So I'm arriving here in two ships. One of the captains say, let's go take the people and arriving there, they found everything destroyed. Nothing was good. They decided to return the faster possible. And once here, they didn't find the ships. 
One was sunk and the other disappeared and escaped from Galapagos. There are two versions about this story. One says that he went to Lima and died in the jail. The other version says that he returned to the mainland and in one or two years later, the captain find him and he was very happy with a lot of rum, surrounded by many women and, ah, you stole my ship. <laughs> that was the end of the first man, the first resident in Galapagos. Not the original barrel, but the idea started in 1793. Very, very nice. So, let me check if there is a mail. So, this is the idea. I will give you blocks of these postal cards. Oh, I'll take Grammys. Oh, Grammy yes. Al Gaston. Yeah, I'll take yes. Grammy's cards. You're going to send it back? Oh, yeah, I'm sending this. East 73rd yeah. Street. Oh, yeah, I can hand deliver these. We all can. I got Michigan. Pennsylvania, that's close to us. Do you want them? No, sure. Carol. So, I'm sending this one to my mom and dad. Just as we jumped in to snorkel, one of our group members, Phil, captured this footage of a young seal who decided to playfully join us for a swim. We just had a brief, beautiful moment with the turtle. Watch them as he comes up for air. It's really quick. They'll come out, take a breath, go right back in, and then we just kind of swim alongside him for a moment, and then let him be. And that's it. They're gone. This place is amazing. It's like, yeah, every second something's every happening. Second. Oh, so we, put it. Oh, there we, <laughs> we then made our way to a different section of the island, a beach seemingly even more secluded. Here we have to follow the trail. All these depressions are sea turtle nesting zone. In fact, you can see that there was activity only a few nights ago. Look at the track. Usually they come here to lay eggs. I loved that spot. It was like a piece of paradise found only in movies. Everyone was taking it in because for some of us, it would be our final moments in the Galapagos. Galapagos! <laughs> I don't want to get up and go tomorrow. <laughs> Our second snorkeling location of the day would be to a volcanic crater called the Devil's Crown. The Devil's Crown was a great end to the day. That evening, we thanked and showed the staff our appreciation, concluding the trip with one more celebration. Six fifteen in the morning. Some of us are going to be heading to the airport because our Galapagos cruise has come to an end. This has been a great few days, some of the best things I've ever done in any of my travels. But now Joe and I are going to head to Cotopaxi, which is going to be another adventure, just a different kind and different temperature. So we got to prepare for that. Anyway, let's get ready. <laughs> Bye. And don't forget to smile. <laughs> We were dropped off at the port and said our final goodbye to our great guide, Roberto. We were hopping on a quick ferry, transferring to a bus that'll take us to the airport. On this flight, we stop in Guayaquil, then it's another two hours to Quito. Once arriving, we had a final dinner with our Galapagos group. Then in the morning, Joe and I took a shuttle bus four hours to Cotopaxi. The hostel had alpacas on the property. It was my first time seeing them, so of course, I spent some time feeding them before checking in. 
Wow. Wow. Welcome to Cotopaxi. This is fantastic. You know, today is my birthday, and I don't think I could have asked for a better place to stay. It's called the Secret Garden, and we're actually in the middle of the National Park. You can see Cotopaxi right over there with its snow-capped mountains. And that is the view I'm going to be waking up to every morning for the next couple of days. With the booking, we have the option of doing a couple of hikes, maybe one to the uh, base camp to see the glaciers of Cotopaxi, some horseback riding, or I could just sit outside and do nothing and enjoy this beautiful view. Anyway, we just finished lunch, and now we're going to take a two-hour hike to a waterfall, which I think we could swim in. Even though it's August, they said that the water might be cold. Anybody who knows me or watches my videos knows that I can't do cold. So I was debating the entire time whether I jump in or not once I got there. Come on, let's go. Holy sh! I am running in. You're running. You can't run in. You can't run in this. She's running. Oh! That's colder than Albania. Ah, this is so cold. That's painful. Oh. That was by far the coldest water I've ever felt in my life. That was worth no. it. No. That was worth it. Good morning, day number two from Cotopaxi, and this is crazy. Just two days ago, we were in the Galapagos in summer wear on the beach, and now I'm dressed in layers, ready to do a hike. Today's activity, we're gonna be going to Cotopaxi. Not the top, because obviously that would take a lot more preparation than I'm ready for, but we will at least get to the base so we can see the glaciers, which would be cool, because I've never seen glaciers before. I have been experiencing some shortness of breath. Hopefully, this hike is not that difficult for me to make it to the top. Joe seems to be fine, though. I'm great. And I smoked cigarettes and drank. <laughs> It was so windy that my microphone couldn't pick up the audio instructions. Basically, it just said that if you feel nauseous or throw up, you'd have to stop and be sent back down. This two-hour hike will take us 15,000 feet above sea level to reach the start of the glacier. Take the occasional breath, like deep breath. But it's going so good. right there. It's hard to stand still. He's slipping and sliding everywhere. Can I almost touch it? Oh yeah, that was hard. Hey, we made it. We made it. Getting to be that close to a glacier 
reaching out and touching it, that was a pretty special moment. Now it's back down the same way we came. The trail isn't very hard, but when you're not acclimated, every breath counts. We made it down to the base camp for a quick rest and to enjoy our snack. Got my takakta bread over here. Inside, we had some warm drinks before making the trek back down. Day number three from Cotopaxi. Today we're gonna to be doing some horseback riding. Actually just me and Joey's staying behind at the lodge. And this is one of the activities I've been looking forward to most coming to Cotopaxi, is riding a horse and being amongst this beautiful landscape. Okay. We're off. Oh, be careful. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're just following each other's lead. So hopefully we won't be going off the rails on this one. Actually, I heard a couple of days ago somebody fell off the horse and broke their shoulder. A week before coming here, I took a horse seminar for work on how to ride a horse, how to fall off a horse, and how to drive off a horse. Hopefully I won't be needing those skills. <laughs> Open field. But for this section, we have to lean a little bit back. Lean back, buddy. Look at this. It's a dried up river. Stop for drink first. ¿Qué es el nombre de esta montaña aquí? Chinchalawa? That is Chinchalawa. Yeah, try not to look down. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, buddy. Yeah, it's Coda Paxi. My horse is super obedient. He won't leave the trail. I mean, at this point, I just let go of the steer. He's pretty much on autopilot. Got some wild horses up ahead. I got caught by surprise when all of a sudden the horses started taking off. All right, we're galloping. Yeah, buddy. You did it. Good job. What a great morning, perfect weather. Riding on the horses was pretty simple. We didn't go too fast following along the trail, so it was very calming actually. But at the end, it was perfect that we got to gallop through the valley. And that was just like the best ending ever. Although I will say that after a minute or two, it does feel like you're being kicked in the balls a thousand times. But <laughs> other than that, it was great. It is time to say goodbye to Cotopaxi as we now head to Banos, and I absolutely love it here. We have spent three days here with zero internet and it just makes you think of other ways to kind of occupy your time. For example, feeding alpacas, going for a walk, or <laughs> learning how to start a fire. Wait, I've made fire. Or just simply being more sociable, making more friends, and playing simple games. I would have to say that Cotopaxi has been the highlight of my trip so far, even though we're still not done yet. So. Let's get ready and head to Banos. What's the matter? She knows we're leaving. I know, I know. We don't want to leave either. We arranged a private pickup, taking us to the nearest bus for a four-hour ride headed to the city of Banos. 
Okay, we've made it to Banos. The weather's pretty crap, so we're gonna settle up at the hostel, at the hostel, and then see what activities are available to us for the next couple of days. Banos is a gateway to the nearby Amazon basin, known for access to outdoor adventures, which will start tomorrow due to the rainy weather. Well, it's still raining, but we're going right water rafting. Give me a hand with this. Nope. <laughs> I haven't had much luck with rafting the few times that I've done it. It's usually like a level one or a two, which is just basically drifting. But I heard that in Banos, you can get rapids up to like level three and four, which is actually official whitewater rafting. So I'm pretty hopeful for this. How is your energy today? Great, yeah. yeah. So, you know, good energy, good trip. On the river, it's easy. If you don't pay attention, die. Too late is on the river. Thanks. So when you want to <laughs> After some basic training, we were ready. Oh yeah, I can already tell this is gonna be fun. I mean, look at this. You're gonna feel this one. And it is pouring. A little warm up before we get started. I follow Fernando with the, the gyrating hips. <laughs> <laughs> As we're about to start, our guide Fernando says, would anyone like to try bull riding? It's when you sit in front and ride the waves. The beginning of the river is already choppy. This is called bull riding. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna fall off. So not even 40 seconds in, okay. I fall back and crack Joey right in the face. But he's a trooper. He recovered and we got to enjoy the rest of the experience. Oh, he's standing. <laughs> Hold on, Bronco Bill. <laughs> I remember seeing some big waves coming, thinking, brace yourself. And then all of a sudden, I was no longer on the raft. It happened so fast. <laughs> I gave bull riding another shot, this time making sure not to fall off. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my friend. Nice job. <laughs> nice job. Sorry for cracking you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> good vision for like the first 10 minutes of that. <laughs> no, that was rough. I was kind of worried for a second. It's okay. Yeah. That's why I didn't help you get out of the boat. Well, I can honestly say that was my first legit white water rafting experience. Great day today. We followed up the next day with another activity at Adventure Park. We got four activities today. Via Ferrata, which I never even knew what it was, but it's some form of rock climbing. And zip lining. And I think we have the entire park to ourselves. <laughs> you the guys? For our safety? I, I am guy. He uh, gay. No. <laughs> I got that. First activity, zip line through that. That looks freaking awesome. In this activity, you can go only position is lie down. Lie down and one by one. Here we go. Woo! Super fast. Yeah. <laughs> one, one, one. 
Thanks a lot. Almost there. Definitely gets the heart rate pumping. Next up, the Aferrata. stage. Next up, zip line number two. Okay, we're heading back to Quito. It's been a great few days in Baños, even though the weather wasn't cooperating. Well, at least that until now, the sun just started coming out. But regardless, it's been fun here. There's so many things to do in Baños that I wish we could spend more time here. Uh, but unfortunately, we have to head back to Quito because this will be the ending of Joe's trip as he'll head back home from there in a few days. And for me, I'll be ending my trip going to Tena. So let's start this three hour bus journey. Last day in Quito. It's been fun, but we didn't actually get to do much. We did get to see a festival called Diablo Huma a spiritual guide of the people representing the energy of nature in the form of a powerful warrior who consecrates the earth, sun, and the moon. We did try to go to the Teleferico yesterday, which is a cable car so you can get a view of Quito, but it was close for renovation, and while we were there, we ran into a random amusement park and we went for a ride because nothing else to do. Tomorrow, Joey heads back home to New York City, and I'm going to take a three to four hour bus heading to Tena. Tena is a city in the Amazon of Ecuador, just on the edge of the Andes Mountains and close proximity to exploring the rainforest. I am staying at this beautiful hostel called Hostel Pacay. I have a private room which is absolutely gorgeous. I heard more people will be coming in later on today, which I'm hoping for because one of the activities I want to do is determined by how many people sign up. It's 7 in the morning right now and I slept pretty good but I kept hearing the sound all night that I could only describe as a large drop in a bucket. Maybe it's a monkey, I have no idea. If you know, please tell me. Anyway, we're about to head out pretty soon for a day trip through the Amazon and three other people signed up for this trip. Tony, who runs the hostel, will be our guide and joining is Will and Nanki. Uh, Alipunja means good morning. These people are Quichuas, not part of the indigenous group that living in the rainforest. It's only after the conquest when the Spanish dared to come to here, so people started to learn other languages like Spanish and Quichua. Uh, these people are doing many things, you know, after the conquest they are doing farming. We were taken down to the river to see how they mine for gold. <laughs> She said, my name is uh, Virginia, um, I want to show you the way how we do gold washing. This is free. Yes. How much gold would you find within a day? Uh, we don't know how much they can find it, for example. But look at that. No? Metal, that's why people are crazy. Yeah. Over this, a little piece of dust. Mm -hmm. Costumes here is for jungle people like Quichua to do Guayusa. Whole family drink together Guayusa. Why? Because it's the way how people, you know, give fast knowledge to the younger generations. Baby, Guayusa is like so essential. One day can dissolve that dough with water for to drink. There is one chicha that I really like it. And after other layer of plantain, and other layer of yuca. Only it fermented. That's really good. In the world, you know, we was fighting for the country. Too strong for was when it was the border. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, uh, wow. we defended, you know, the country. <laughs> we, we were then shown their skills in pottery. The whole thing, like a week for one piece. That's including the painting? The painting, everything. They finish painted, they put on the fire. Using hair as their paintbrush, we got to try our decorative skills. I'm trying to do the dots instead of lines. I didn't go with the straight lines. I tried to make smoke. 
<laughs> on top of the volcano. That was incredible. Hanging out with them for about an hour, learning about their ways. And now on to the next thing, which is I think we're gonna drive further out to catch a boat. The Napa River flows from the eastern slopes of the Andes, descending to the Peruvian border and continuing through the tropical rainforest where it joins the Amazon River. So this is like a small island where we are going to visit. Yeah, it's the place where people make chocolate. On the way to the chocolate farm, we made one quick stop. Holy crap. There's no water, no? So that's why everything is moving like a slow. Yeah. They are the prey of war. Look at that one. Jenny moves so creepy. Oh, right, okay. Okay then, moving on. <laughs> Before grinding our own chocolate, we got to try freshly roasted chocolate beans. Clockwise, you get a really good cacao mask. Some like liquid fondue chocolate. <laughs> She's got me working. <laughs> Don't get chocolate for free. So what you learned today, that chocolate is not from Italy, it's from the rainforest. Like cotton. Okay. How they make is like two pieces put together and they glue it with some wax. Oh! oh nicely done! <laughs> Incredible. Oh! Next up, we were visiting Amazonica, a wild animal rescue and rehabilitation center. My name is Clap. I'm on a volunteer here. 3,000 animals here. Unfortunately, almost 50% of them was not able to leave and has to stay here with us because of physical damage, psychological damage, so they cannot survive. We release them back into the wild and get easily recaptured back. This is Amazon Paris. All the birds you see here, not able to fly anymore. Um, it's a very common practice for people to break the bird wings so that they can be kept easier in captivity. Tapir is the largest mammal in Central America. 100 kilogram, humongous. They eat a lot, poops a lot. That's why tapir is one of the most essential seed dispensers in Amazon. When she first came here, she always do this. What's because that? the previous family that owned her put dress on her and put oh. her on a cage. The almost 30 um, peccaries here. We're trying to release six of them per year. A lot of people hunt peccaries for meat. Keisha was a test subject from a university in Ecuador. And ever since he came here, we didn't know what happened to her and what kind of experiment they did. But whenever she sees strangers, she always avoid eye contact and then like close up herself and start crying. Very sad. I mentioned earlier that I didn't like going to zoos. It's because I don't like to see animals enclosed. But this was different, and it was really nice to see the good work that the people at Amazonica were doing. We headed further upstream for our final activity of river tubing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good luck with you guys. <laughs> Tony did say that there's, there's nothing harmful in the water like anacondas and piranhas, but I always have like a slight unnerving fear of like Amazon water. Looks like we might get some level one rapid action over here. Woo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> oh! <laughs> this is fun. End of the day on a tube. Drifting down the Amazon River. Can't get any better than this. I don't know if I believe there's nothing in the Amazon River. It's impossible. It's impossible. Mm. There's nothing in the river that can't get you. Oh, that was perfect. Last full day in Tenna. It rained so hard last night. Holy cow. It, it woke me up. Tonight, I am planning to do a nighttime hike through the rainforest. So rain and shine, that's what we're gonna be doing. Okay, so where we're headed is to a waterfall called Supacho. The hike is not difficult, about only 20 minutes. 
to get there, but the lady at the front entrance told me that you can swim. I wish I knew that. I would have dressed appropriately and brought some trunks. You can hear it. I think I see it. Well, I may not be prepared to swim in it, but I can sure enjoy it. And I think I made the right decision coming here today because the weather deterred a few people from coming here. I got it all to myself. I mean, except for a couple that's down there, but. All right, it's six o'clock and we're almost ready to head out for our nighttime Amazon hike. The only thing is that I will be flying blind because this morning I dropped my camera during the waterfall hike. And this thing is built like a tank. I've dropped it hundreds of times, pretty much every trip. But that was the final straw. <laughs> I almost risked my life saving it like as it fell down, rolling down the rock. I had to like leap out for it like Indiana Jones to save the camera. It still works, but the screen is completely smashed. I can't see myself. So I'm wondering, should I take this camera or use my iPhone as a backup? But at nighttime, it's not the best quality. And for the last activity, I do wanna, you know, I want to showcase it so don't really know what to do hopefully the ending of this video is not shit do you see red eyes that's a yes. snake yes you would see like electric like blue green spider it looks like a banana a spider, but it's like a tarantula. What was that sound? Bird? Yeah. Look at this. Where? In the base of the trunk tree. Look at that. Oh, wow. How do you think it's a foot? Is it? No. Yes. <laughs> Bullet ants all over here. Here we need to be careful with the bullet ants, especially on the wood. Oh! Mm. Literally just fell right inside Look as I was ball. filming. Yeah. Impressive. <laughs> no coral. They. Oh. Beautiful, no? A walking stick. Oh, where'd he go? Yeah. A white horn. That is big. She's aggressive. <laughs> Sleeping the poison on that red frog. That's poisonous? Yes. Would it be enough to hurt a human? Yes. Like kill? Yeah. Okay. Good? Yeah. What a way to end the trip. I think the hardest part was trying not to use my hands to grab onto things because it could either be like thorns or like poisonous frogs. They were poisonous? Could be. I mean, I've never walked through the Amazon at night. There's so many things to get you. Army ants. I decided to film the entire thing using my iPhone and it did the job. I'm just being a perfectionist because the reality is that it doesn't really matter what you use if you could just tell a good story. And besides that, I mean, everything else went pretty smoothly. I mean, this was a big trip, 20 something days, and it couldn't have gone any better. So with that being said, what an adventure this has been. Another big travel in the books, now back home to New York. From Tena, it was back to Quito for a day before returning back home. What a great trip this was. So many first-time experiences in Ecuador, from seeing sea lions to alpacas. Happy to share another adventure with my best friend Joe.
This place sucks. <laughs> Hard to determine what was my favorite place or moment because each area was so distinct. Preparing for different climates was the most challenging packing I've had to do while stubbornly still trying to maintain everything within the carry-on. One moment, you're boiling hot in the Galapagos and next, you're freezing in the mountains of Cotopaxi. That's what makes Ecuador so unique, not to mention the warm hospitality of the people. We also got to make many new cool friends from different parts of the world, which always makes every travel experience so much more fun. Ecuador being on the equator and at one of the highest altitudes, experiencing being out of breath was certainly an interesting new experience. I'm out of breath just walking. I've been to other high altitude countries and never had an issue. Ecuador just got me. It's nothing to do with physical fitness. It's completely anecdotal. It either gets you or it doesn't. My guess is that we didn't stay in any one area long enough to get acclimated. Besides that, Ecuador has been one of my favorite trips so far for its diversity and beauty. There's so much to do and many variations on how to do it that I can definitely see myself returning again in the future. For now, until the next one. Galapagos cruise. <laughs> I can't say it. Galapagos cruise. Galapagos cruise. Galapagos cruise. Galapagos cruise. And sometimes you have to monologue with traffic behind you. <laughs> Flies everywhere. <laughs> the last one is a oh, oh, the oh, you come on. Hey, How the natural selection is working.